And welcome back with more Assassin's Creed 2. We're actually going to be going to jail, but not actually getting arrested. So we're going to climb a tower and talk to our dad. Oh, why would we talk to our dad? That's weird. Just a little. We don't talk to anyone else, just our dad. Which is weird because we know exactly which cell he's in. Well, I mean, didn't you follow the waypoint? Is that how assassins do it? They don't. They don't actually know things. It's just a waypoint from a. That's what I assume. Um, an omniscient, omnipotent character. Because you have to remember, he's looking. He's viewing everything as if he's Ezio. Why well, no? But still, and he, you know that is a good point because that's true. And his hand is really shiny for some reason. Very shiny. But um, but yeah, with uh. With this, it's like, a lot of people forget that you're actually not playing in the time of when the game's actually happening. You're playing a replay. Yeah, I mean, so, that's what it is. That's why you can't go off killing citizens, because you're reliving memories. You're given a little bit of leeway as to how you go about mm -hmm. completing the memories, but for the most part, the memory has to remain the same. Yeah, and it's like you can't just change it. I mean, ah, you, you lied. This is another waypoint. Yeah, I did. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I guess it's because I wanted to show off the actual what, like what you have to do, mm -hmm. and you get um, you get more map space. You get more maps, and you actually get the icons and stuff. And uh, <clears throat> I don't show the map often, but we're gonna get a codex page, which doesn't mean much right now. Yeah, but we will. Which doesn't make sense why you can find them now. Yeah, we don't know about codex pages yet. We don't get information about that until later. Um, but we're going to get one now only because I can. And that guy was very poor. He had four florins. But yeah. Thankfully, you know, uh, with codex pages, every four you collect, your health goes up. But we don't get those health squares until later. We have, yeah. to, we have, to, do, we have to use them uh, for something, but that's a little bit later on. Um, but now we're back home, and we get to, like... Find the hidden room, and it's very shiny in eagle vision, which is our assassin vision thing. Mm -hmm. But this, I like this part. I like this part of the game because a the music he discovers his and destiny. B, yeah, and B, like he goes from this kind of like okay, I got kind of nice clothes to you know super badass. Yeah, this like awesome suit. I wish I could wear something like this and not get weird looks. I would. I don't know. I just like, the, I also like the hood. I like the, the little pointy. Yeah, bit I think hood. it's, um, what was it? I think in, uh, I think it was Black Flag was the last one that the hood didn't have, like, a sort of eagle or, or um, bird type, yeah, like, um, look to it. Yeah, oh, and I just noticed something. If you look on the back of his head, the the mm -hmm. stitching yeah. looks like the assassin symbol. Oh, yeah. I didn't notice that until just now. It's actually really cool. No! <laughs> that was such a weird way to... He's honest, at least. I know, but the way he, the, the, the delay was kind of annoying. It's like, no! Oh, and yeah, I'm... Oh, I, yeah, and those physics are jumpy. Yeah, dead bodies always kind of... When they fall, they... they they fixed Wait for a it. second. They fixed it in three. Uh, well, that took them a while, but it did. Well, it's because they finally it's it's officially a different engine. I know, but you know it's one of those. Uh, the body. I'm behind a tree. No one will find you. No one will find me there. No, and this is where we first get to see um, someone that we'll be constantly interacting with in the game. Not not him, but someone else. Um, but look at if you look at his shoulder. And you notice the red, reddish light. Um, we see that reddish light all over the game, but in but, correlation to a particular character. Yeah, and it's really weird. I always imagine there's like someone following behind that guy in the background there, that guy in the hood, that like has a lantern or a lamp with like red glass or something like that, and is just following him around to give him a more menacing look. And it's really silly. That's not silly. It's you know what that is? It's symbolism. Oh. Okay. It's story tropes is what it is. Okay. It really is actually. It really is story tropes. It's just I just, it's just something I noticed and it's just kind of weird, especially since it's like it's all the time. It's like okay, 
at some point we'll know what that character does and what his intentions are, but the light is still there. Oh yeah, it's it, to give you an uneasy feeling when you see that hood again. I know, but it's still it's one of those. I still think that I, he's like followed around by someone with the red lamp, it's the red lanterns. Oh, dude, it's totally what it is. So we get to go see uh, Petru- our family, our brothers and father get acquitted of whatever they're being accused of. Acquitted. 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 That's what it said. What it said, sure? Eduardo. Are you sure? Yes. Oh yeah, and now we're getting accused of treason. <gasps> so, yeah, as you could probably have guessed, Al Uberti, Uberti, that's his name. Yeah. Yep, Uberto. Whatever his name is, the guy with the weird hat. He is not good. He's he's an evil character. And the guy in the hood in the background obviously is too, but... In case you couldn't have figured it out. Yeah, oh, and this whole thing, unlike, you know, American law where it's innocent until proven guilty, it's the opposite. Oh, and these ropes. These ropes have... Look at those ropes! <laughs> I wish those ropes were real. Yeah, they don't look real. Oh, and our family's dead now. Sorry. They're dead. Oh, hello, tank man. We don't see these heavy guards very often in the early parts of this game, so... Well, that's the whole point, because they're heavy guards. Yeah, oh, and... Yeah, they're there, but they don't do anything. Oh, because they tell you to run. They tell... Oh, yeah, run. That, oh, like, that's the guns in the fountain, they'll never get you there. Yeah, run. That's not, like... It's, it's not very difficult. It's not a, you know... Also, there are multiple ways to get through this section as well. Um, because you can either run like they tell you to. Which I did. You can fight them which long I didn't, enough. Which I didn't Or do. you can technically die. Um, like you, you won't actually captured die. or something like that? Yeah, you'll get captured instead. And then you'll just wake up in the next section of the game. Yeah, well. That's the first sequence, and, which is fun because we can still punch people and they don't, they, they're not alerted to us because when a sequence is ending... It basically alert, it, it turns off all guard interaction so you don't die in, while it's ending the sequence. Mm -hmm. So you can punch guards or murder people during the sequence change, and it won't matter. Republica Cortina. Oh, and yeah, the, Sean's Cortina. request, uh, yeah. these little symbols that he's talking about are called glyphs. Um, now, they're not required to beat the game. No. You they're can, the cool things, though. Yeah, you collect... I think there's 20 of them. You, each one you find. So. There are glowing symbols, various symbols here you and there. You can only see them in Eagle Vision until no. you unlock them. Until you unlock them. Once you unlock them, you see them outside of Eagle Vision. No, you can still see them outside of Eagle Vision. I've never they're seen bright, them they're, they're white outlines, but they're not as bright as they are in Eagle Vision. Well, yeah, because they, they're red in brother, instead. In Brotherhood... In Brotherhood, you cannot see them at all. Until you go into Eagle Vision. I think that's where you might be confusing the two. I don't know, maybe. So, but anyway, these these 20 glyphs, you solve a puzzle. No, because they're not glyphs in um in um, Brotherhood. They're memory fragments. Yeah, l no, memory fragments are in um are in Revelations. Then what's in Brotherhood? They're um, clusters. Clusters, that's it. Because you actually go into the cluster. Okay. Like, it becomes a ledge you can grab onto. Oh, yeah, we're at a brothel, by the way. In case you couldn't tell. So, um... Uh, basically, with these glyphs, there's 20 of them, and they get progressively harder for the puzzles that are contained in each one. Now, each glyph is not specific to a specific puzzle. And not specific to a, to a specific puzzle? Yeah, like it's... Not well, specific to a puzzle? I'm gonna punch you. <laughs> each glyph is... Uh, each time you get a glyph, it's gonna progress to the next puzzle, regardless of what order you go to the actual glyphs in. Um, so when you look up guides for it, don't think, oh, I need the glyph on top of this tower or on this wall or whatever. Because that won't help you. It's whatever number glyph you've gotten is what counts for the mm -hmm. puzzles. Um, now once you finish those puzzles, you get a little clip sequence. It's usually about maybe a second. Mm -hmm. And the more you get, the more you see this clip play out. And once you get all 20, you get the, the full clip. I'm not going to, like, spoil what it actually is about. 
I mean, I don't know. Could, we could later on, I guess, towards the end of the game, if we remember. Because I don't do it in the se in the series, so I don't... I'm probably not going to be reminded of it, but yeah. at the same time, it's like, you know... And now you got to learn how to blend in from yeah. prostitutes. Yeah. Yeah, we're to we're totally one of those courtesans. No, and it's really cool because the way they introduce these mechanics into the game, it also introduces to you the different groups, like I was saying before. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just really cool because then it teaches you how these groups interact with other people in um, uh, during the course of the game, and shows you that there are more than there's more than one way to complete your objectives. Yeah, for um, however much the game is such a pass fail, there are, yeah. there's more than one way of doing everything. Yeah, for me, although they are they do have the three different factions. We have uh, the courtesans, we have thieves, and we also have mercenaries. Mm -hmm. Each have their own skills, and each do different things to guards. Yes, um, courtesans will just distract them. Uh, mercenaries will actually fight them. Um, and thieves will pester them. L l pester them and lure them away. Mm -hmm. um, so each have their own unique skills. And then they teach Ezio how to do these things. Right. Now, we only actually learn how to do stuff from the courtesans. All the other guard, all the other factions, we kind of just are there. They're there. You can use them. But, the, but there's a particular mission mm -hmm. that they're formally introduced. But later on, like, that's where it kind of feels weird. Because, like... A third of the way through the game, you'll learn about the mercenaries, even though you could use the mercenaries before that. Yeah, me personally, when I play, I always use the courtesans. Mm -hmm. Well, because they're the easiest ones. Yeah, they're the easiest ones to work with. <laughs> um, More than one way. <laughs> shut up. And, you know, they're the most effective. I mean, you know, oh, with, 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 with mercenaries, yeah, they fight, but it's still kind of annoying. Because with mercenaries, they don't crowd around you. With Unlike courtesans, where you can actually, like... Well, you, the, you have well, the mobile... mercs, you can tell them to just go ahead of you. That's the best part. I know, but with courtesans, you can have a constantly moving uh, group of people that you control where it goes. Mm -hmm. So, like, right now, we're learning how to blend but the, the, with the groups one, of people. But the problem that I felt um, with uh, the courtesans, as compared to the other, um, the other two factions, is that where the, um, like, I, the one I use the most were the thieves... Because it lures them completely away. Um, but the courtesans is that you lose them fairly quickly. And here's the problem. If you pass by another group of guards, they'll go and distract them automatically. versus the ones that you want. Yeah, like, they'll do it automatically, which I don't like that. That is a no. that is a, a downside to the courtesans. Mm -hmm. but versus you, the other groups that you actually direct where you want them to go. Not always true. Hmm. I've passed guards with mercenaries, and the guards and mercenaries just started fighting each other. Well, that for no reason. Happen. I've never had that. Happen. It's it's really weird. I mean, they just I, didn't like your face. That's what I, it was. I guess not. I it's one of those. I would much rather them, um, you know, say, "Oh, you have to direct in order for the things, the the group, your faction, or whatever that you're using to, um, uh, to take effect." Now, this kind of screwed up where I was trying to steal from five different people, and I did technically. But, but it, it, it didn't, does, it didn't it, have the, the counter up. Yeah, the objective doesn't count until the... You actually learn to do it. Yeah. Which is kind of silly, but, you know, whatever. And so you I'm going to steal from the courtesans. That's what I always did. It's it's a lot easier. And they're never going to be like, Hey, he's stealing from me! That's not necessarily true. It can't! God! Did she get Down Syndrome? <laughs> I didn't know! Stroke? Could be. Why does she sound like that? God! Just the way she talks. I mean, come on. Oh yeah, and this this is Paula, by the way. We kind of neglected it and we glossed over that whole thing. Well, she, well, they talk about what her name is. I know, but we didn't say anything. Madonna Paula. Lucy. Oh yeah, and we get to go see Leonardo, which is always fun. Strange. Which this doesn't. This is not really explained unless you read her. Uh, yeah, unless you know who she is. Yeah, you it, you can read her um, bio when she's first introduced, 
And that I do ha- I do want to point something out with It's totally worth it to look into the um the history and the codex and all that. Oh thing. yeah, those are always or the fun. database is what they call it. Yeah. Codex is Mass Effect wrong game. Yeah. Also, um, until you pass by the, um, the first couple of missions, you're going to be notorious in Florence, no matter what. So you might as well just try to hide from the guards. As yeah, often as and you're going to have to get used to just getting caught. So Yeah, pretty much. Uh, the one thing I do wanted to point out, though, was um, with, uh, with the Xbox controller, you have one button for the map, which is the back button, mm-hmm. which is very handy. Except when you pass a building or a person of interest, because then it takes you to the yeah, it takes entry. you yeah, it takes you to their database entry, and it's like, oh come on, oh yeah, it's totally it's totally balls. It's like why we, don't don't have the same button be two different functions, and not alert me well in advance of what the but the button's get, being. Uh, but it but- does when the thing comes up. It as long as it's up on the screen, it tells I know. You, it but tells at the same the time, it's like that's your own fault. I know, but it's like, why would you have the map, something I really need to use, and the database... Because there are other ways to get to the map. Yeah, and there's other ways to get to the database. But it's just alerting you that this is the new thing. But it's every time you pass a building, like a, like and a super building. And also because there's only a limited number of buttons on the controller. I know, but controller. how often do you use... Like, the context camera mm-hmm. is not used... Any time, except when you're in cover or in groups or, or, or stuff like that. So they could have easily done that instead. He's solving stuff. Oh yeah, Leonardo's like a genius, so... I think we all know that. Just so you guys are aware... Oh yeah, it, it takes so long that we just end up falling asleep. And he just shoved it into our crotch, because... Leonardo. And I you'll find if you don't know what I mean by that, we'll be doing Brotherhood and Revelations and Three and whatever else at some point. Not next. Hell no. Not like Anvil next. <laughs> oh So uh we'll 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 discuss Leonardo like in more in depth as his character as we progress, and it actually is really interesting on how they portray him. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah. Uh, Leonardo's an asshole by making us think we had to cut off our finger in order to use it, but we actually don't. Which, which in the in the first Assassin's Creed, it's explained that's your commitment to the um, to the cause, to the to the Assassin Brotherhood. Exactly. Which Leonardo mentions as well, but they don't really talk about it too much. They talk about it later in the game. It's not. Yes, they yes. talk about it later, but they don't. They 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 change things up and and stuff like that. So it's actually really interesting. Florentine guard. Oh, and I like the assassin logo that's on his belt that's supposed to be made of metal is, like, moving along with his torso and, like, stretching and morphing. Because they just stuck his clothes to his model and didn't really make the belt buckles a separate entity. (laughs) Excuse me. And, uh, so yeah, Leonardo's gonna get in, uh, in, in, uh... Also, here's my question. These are supposed to be the genetic memories of Ezio. How does he? How does he know they that this is the way they were standing, and this is what they were talking about? Yeah, that's there? what's really weird. I don't know. Maybe it's like source code, but like more extreme. I don't know. Oh, and two things. First, why are we doing this out in the open in a courtyard? Also, I love when he starts kicking him because it's just like, how about now? <laughs> it's like it doesn't look like he kicks him all that hard. <laughs> yeah, it's like you really, dude. And, and that woman's just walking by like, eh, whatever. The guy's on the ground and the guard's just being an asshole. And here we go. Stabbed him in the lung. Into the heart. Whatever. Um, I love how even it, even, you can even stab in the like chest the armored guys. Yeah. Like, how strong is that blade? Apparently very strong. Oh. Yeah, I see I was as confused as I was when I first played this game. Like, other bodies? Until you remember... Ezio, or, uh, Leonardo is a, if you've never seen his Vitruvian Man sketch, he's very into, like, uh, anatomy and stuff. Yeah. Oh, and look at the guard's head as I move. It's really weird. I don't know what exactly causes this, but... It's because you're holding him like he's still alive, but the body is, is dead. I know, but it's... So, when you carry someone else and they're alive, they're, they're supposed to be moving back and forth. But, I know, but because because they're not alive, because he's not alive. When you stop moving, it goes back to the default dead motion. I guess. <laughs> yeah, like it never happened. Just a body on the on the stairs. 
Because why not? It was supposed to have disappeared if I remember right. Nah. No. Oh. And yeah, we bring our, our other codex pages to Leonardo for decryption. That's where we take them. So, now you guys know. Um, what else? We got, what, 30 seconds. Uh, uh, Answer everything in the universe. Go! Oh, okay, 12. 42. I'm sorry, I was 30 short. I, uh, why are we friends? I don't know. What do you? What How did you, you get that wrong? What, what do you time? see in me, Eduardo? I'm not that good of a woman. I don't know, massive cans, I don't know. I know, they, they bring all the boys to the yard. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see you guys later, and we're no less. Bye.